Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we are returning to Fallout 76 to spend another 1,000 script with the Purveyor on 3-star ranged legendary weapons. And as always, I'll take a few moments to talk about each one, about what makes it good, bad, or indifferent. So let's go on ahead and get started and see what the Purveyor has for us this week. So for our first roll, we got an Executioner's Railway Rifle, with VAT's critical hits doing plus 50% damage and plus 250 damage resistance while reloading. So the Executioner's effect is an interesting effect, because unlike most of the other effects, as far, in fact as far as I know all of the other legendary effects, the ex Executioner's effect is still multiplicative, meaning that when you're gaining that plus 50% damage, you're actually gaining plus 50% of the damage you're seeing on your weapon cart, even if you've increased it through perks, chems, or whatever that give you a bonus. So that's actually very powerful, because most of the time it's just the base damage of the weapon that it's increasing the, dam the percentage of. But the drawback with the Executioner's Effect is that it does absolutely nothing until your target is at 40% health or below. Well, technically below 40%, so 39% health or below. Um, and, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That could be very powerful against bigger enemies like bosses or even just Mirelert Queens or Scorch Beasts or things like that. But you're really going to get the most bang for your buck out of the Executioner's Effect on... Fast firing, low damage per shot weapons, because it will significantly increase the damage per for the last few shots, and maybe even save you a few rounds, even on some normal enemies sometimes. So, the railway rifle is not necessarily the best weapon for it, but it could still be good against bosses or things like that. The vast critical hits doing plus fifty percent damage is a very strong effect. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's just very good for people who like using VATs, which I do. It's just basically pure extra damage for those VATs critical hits. And the nice thing about that is that, as I understand it, the VATs critical hits actually bypass the, you know, right off the top 70% damage reduction that the Scorch Beast Queen has. And I forget what Earl's percentage is. I think it's higher than 70%, maybe 80% or whatever, but don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Uh, but whatever that percentage is, as I understand it, the criticals actually bypass that. So that makes them very powerful in that situation, and that uh, second star especially powerful. So that's a good thing. The plus 250 damage resistance while reloading, I'm really not a big fan of. You might get a little bit more out of it on this weapon just because the railway rifle has such a small magazine size at 10 and if you're going to be using it as a fully automatic version which i normally would then you're going to be reloading a lot even in combat so getting some extra damage resistance while that's happening is definitely not a bad thing but you are going to be seeing some diminishing returns on how much it's actually going to protect you depending on how much armor you have if you have damage resistance in the neighborhood of three to four hundred then you're not going to see a huge benefit from it though you will see some so overall, this one I would classify as somewhat mediocre. It's interesting, it's not amazing, but it might be fun to play around with at some point. But anyway, let's go on ahead and move on to the next one and see what else we get. And here we've got a Hunter's Short Flamer with replenishing action points with each kill and the VAT's critical meter filling 15% faster. So the Hunter's effect is probably one of the worst of the... Slayer's effects. It does have a little bit of benefit because it does work on Scorch Beasts since they are technically animals, but overall there's just not a lot of times when you're going to be actively hunting down animals. Of course you're going to kill whichever ones that you run across when you need to, but I don't know that it's really worth carrying around a weapon specifically for that, especially not one as heavy as the Short Flamer here, so definitely not a good first star here. The Replenishing action points with each kill, that's a solid effect, but it's a bit lost on the Flamer because the Flamer is going to chew through your AP very quickly, and you can you could get away with using it for in VATS to some extent, but you're going to burn through your AP very quickly and be forced to either aim down the sights or hip fire it for at least some of your usage, unlike a lot of the rifles and pistols that you can use in vats almost exclusively if you have your build right so 
a little bit lost on this uh, weapon. The Vast Critical Meter filling 15% faster. It does synergize well with the second effect because they're both VAT centric, but unfortunately, again, this is not the best weapon for that. So overall, this one I'm considering pretty much a dud. Let's go on ahead and move on to the next one and see what else we can get. And this one is rather disappointing. We've got a Ghoul Slayer's Gauss Pistol with 25% faster fire rate and 15% faster reload. So the Ghoul Slayer's effect is, in my opinion, one of the less useful of the Slayer's effects as well, simply because most ghouls are pretty squishy to begin with, and you can typically put them down pretty easily with non-legendary weapons. So the idea of needing to keep a special weapon around just to deal with ghouls is a little silly. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of hunting the big bloated ghouls, like especially in the nuke zones or something like that, then you might find more use for the ghoul slayer's effect. But at the same time, if you were just running something like anti-armor, bloodied, or aristocrats, or whatever, that was just good all around, then you could probably do just as well. So, overall, not exciting there. But the second and the third star combined especially are some of the best effects in the game but the unfortunately the 25 percent faster fire rate on this weapon doesn't do a whole lot the gauss pistol already pretty much fires as fast as you can pull the trigger of course it's not going to be charged up if you're just spamming the trigger but you'll get some damage that way and unfortunately the faster fire rate effect the second star there does not improve the speed at which it um, the speed at which it charges up. So it's kind of lost on this weapon, unfortunately. And then the 15% faster reload, well, that's great on any weapon, including this one, but that's probably the best third star or probably the best star on this weapon. Unfortunately, the because the 25% faster fire is really good on any weapon that can be fully automatic. So the second and the third stars there would combine very well on one of those but that's not what we got here let's see what we get next maybe we'll uh, see those effects again at some point here and this time we got a junkie short gatling gun with the last round in a magazine having 25 percent chance to deal double damage and plus 50 damage resistance while aiming so the junkies effect i do feel like it's gone down in value a bit because of the aristocrats effect because play, full health players who want the extra damage are probably going to, or at least in many cases, will be better off with the Aristocrats effect. Because if they're already running around with 32,000 caps all the time, then they're getting the same damage bonus with no debuff from the addictions. On the other hand, for the players who really enjoy using chems to, as temporary buffs for their characters then the Junkies effect could still be very strong. So, and even when for characters who are players who are not doing that, it's still one of the stronger full health first stars. So, it's definitely not bad in that regard. Unfortunately, the second star is, in my opinion, basically like not having a second star, because, especially on a weapon like this, where it's not going to fire exceptionally quickly, but it has a very large magazine, so you basically are just never going to see that effect happen. You may as well just assume that with the Gatling gun. The plus 50 damage resistance while aiming, that's not terrible, and the Gatling gun is definitely the kind of weapon that I would aim down sights a lot because I aim down the sights a lot with my heavy weapons. I'm not really much into hip firing, you know, to each player their own, but that's the way I typically do it. And so I would get some extra damage resistance while I was aiming, which I wouldn't complain about. But at the same time, it's also not super exciting. So overall, this one is kind of mediocre. Let's see what else we can get. And here we've got a Hunter's Gatling Plasma with Vat's critical hits doing plus 50% damage and faster movement speed while aiming. So we talked about the Hunter's effect before. All of that applies here. Really one of the more disappointing of the Slayer's effects. The Vat's critical hits doing plus 50% damage. We talked about that before and it pretty much applies here because this is really not the kind of weapon you want that on. I have a friend who does sometimes use his Gatling Plasma in VATS and to good effect and he gets a fair number of crits, but he also does have to spend a lot of time either aiming down the sights or hip firing. So 
you definitely cannot full on bat spec with this kind of a weapon the way you can with rifles and pistols but uh, it doesn't mean you can't use it that way but i don't think most players are if at least in part because if you're using your uh, power armor with a weapon like this then you're going to be burning through your fusion cores very very quickly by using that so a bit disappointing on the second star as well the faster movement speed while aiming is also disappointing because if you already have the speed demon mutation which i do on all of my characters and i think most high level players probably will then it's really not doing anything at all for you and even if you don't i just don't imagine there's a lot of players spending a ton of time running around while holding the aim button so Overall, this one is just disappointing. Definitely going to be going back to Murmur through her uh, script box. So let's see what else we can get. And here we've got a Stalker's Short Gamma Gun with fast critical hits doing plus 50% damage and breaks 50% slower. So the Stalker's Effect is, at this point, in my opinion, the worst of the first stars for uh, ranged weapons anyway, simply because... I have done some testing, and even since the Legendary Effect rebalance, I still sometimes miss my VATS shots with a Stalker's weapon, even when I'm not in combat. So, I'm not getting my 100% VATS accuracy, yet I am still paying the plus 50% um, AP cost. So, basically it's a debuff, not a buff as I see it. The VATS critical hits doing plus 50% damage, well, I'm not going to beat that dead horse. It's a good effect. It's good on this weapon. Unfortunately, the first star kind of makes it a bit of a dud. Breaking 50% slower, that's not my favorite third star, but it is definitely a solid one just because I don't think anybody likes repairing their weapons, so having to do so less often is definitely a benefit, and I won't argue with that one bit. Um, not one of my favorites, but not bad. Overall, this one is kind of mediocre if actually if the it's kind of bad just because of the first star so let's go on ahead and move on to the next one and here we've got a zeal short radium rifle with plus 25 percent damage while aiming and faster movement speed while aiming so the zealot's effect is i don't know probably me kind of mediocre as far as slayer's effects go it doesn't help against I mean, it does help against, you know, the regular Scorch, but you don't really need a whole lot of help against the regular Scorch because they're already pretty squishy to begin with, much like your typical ghoul. But it is effective against the Scorch Beast, um, the Scorch Beast Queen, as well as all of the creatures that the Scorch Beast or Scorch Beast Queen make Scorch that you may have to fight. So it has a little bit of extra value in that regard, especially maybe against the Scorch Beast Queen fights. The 25% damage while aiming bonus is a very nice thing. You know, this isn't the weapon type of weapon that I would prefer to see that on. I'd rather have VATS bonuses on a radium rifle and uh, damage bonus while aiming on heavy guns. But if you're the type of player who doesn't care for VATS and prefers to aim down the sights, even with things like rifles and pistols, then that's going to be very good for you on this weapon because it's just free damage. And then the faster movement speed while aiming... We talked about that before, uh, so I'm not going to beat that uh, to death, but yeah, definitely not my favorite one there. Overall, I'd call this one pretty mediocre. It's something that, you know, if you could get mods for it, then I could see a mid-level player using it until they got something better, but because of how difficult it is to get the radium rifle mods, I just don't really see anybody using this particular version of it. So let's see what else we can get. And here we've got a Junkie's Short Assault Rifle with plus 50% VATS hit chance and plus 1 perception. So the Junkie's effect we talked about before, it's still one of the better full health effects. It's plus 50% damage, base damage of the weapon, for up to 10% uh, per addiction, up to a maximum of 5 to get that 50%. So if you choose your addictions wisely, then it's not bad. Uh, you can either choose addictions for chems that your character uses regularly or just choose addictions that provide penalties that really don't affect your build significantly. The plus 50% VATS hit chance is one of my favorite second stars. I'm a big VATS player, so I definitely like those. And it really does increase your damage output because really one of the best ways to make sure you do good damage is to make sure you hit your target. So... It's good in that regard. It also makes it easier to target weak points like heads and the thruster on the Mr. 
uh, gutsy or um, so on to get some extra damage that way. It will also effectively increase the range of most weapons be, uh, beyond what it shows on the uh, weapon card just because it will offset the accuracy penalty beyond that range but you will still see the damage drop off beyond that range so something to be aware of but it can still be useful in some situations the plus one perception is not particularly exciting it does synergize well with the second star because its primary benefit is that it gives you more of that uh, accuracy but it's really not much additional accuracy especially in comparison with that second star so it would be much better if it was a different uh, third star but overall i'd call this one either on the higher side of mediocre on the, or the lower side of good so it's not great but it's something kind of solid Anyway, let's go on ahead and see what else we can get here. And here we've got a Medic's Short Plasma Pistol with plus 25% damage while aiming and plus 1 agility. So the Medic's effect is... It's good at what it does, and this is the kind of weapon that you could really make use out of it. If you were VAT spec, you could be getting a critical hit at least close to every other shot or at least every third shot or so even if you're full health you should be able to pull that off or get close to it so you can definitely get a lot of hit uh, criticals and if you're using this thing in fully automatic mode then you can definitely give a lot of healing to yourself and your teammates in the immediate area so if you're looking to play a support build it's a solid way to go I would prefer, if I was going to play a support build, to be using a weapon that I could suppress and the plasma pistol or rifle, however you mod it out, is not able to be suppressed, which is, in my opinion, its biggest weakness. The plus 25% damage while aiming, unfortunately that does not synergize well with the medic's effect because either you're going to be using vats to benefit from the medic's effect or you're going to be aiming down the sights to benefit from the second star or hip firing and benefiting from neither. So. It's, there's something to be said for having versatility in a weapon like that, but at the same time, I feel like you're better off having a weapon that's a little bit more focused on the playstyle you want to be running, and if you want to run more than one playstyle, just switch weapons when you switch playstyles. Uh, that's my opinion, you know, I, I understand some people might differ on that. The plus one agility, it's not bad, I don't think anyone's going to complain about getting some extra agility because it does give you some more action points, it does help make it a little stealthier if you try to do stealth at all, but overall the bonuses from it are not a whole lot, so there's a lot of better third stars there that this could have been. Overall this one I would say is decent for a niche player, but for most players is going to be pretty much going back to going back to the purveyor inner script box. So. Let's go ahead and try one more here and see what we get. And here we've got a Vampire's uh, Pipe Bolt Action Pistol with Vat's Critical Hits doing plus 50% damage and plus 50 damage resistance while aiming. So the Vampire's Effect is actually one of my favorite effects in the game. Pretty much all of my characters keep at least one Vampire's Weapon on them for situations where I consider survivability more important than damage. Mostly that ends up being daily ops and the occasional other situation, but mostly just daily ops. But, you know, I don't think that this is the best weapon for it because the Vampire's Effect gives pretty much the same amount of healing no matter what, how much damage the weapon that you're firing does. So it's much, much more beneficial on fast firing weapons or shotguns that hit with eight pellets with every shot than it is on slow hard hitting weapons that doesn't mean you won't get any benefit at all from it and this is the kind of weapon that you can suppress so even getting any healing at all when you are in stealth can actually go a long way to keeping you alive but i feel like you'd be better off with anti-armor bloodied aristocrat something like that on the first star for a weapon like this the Vats Critical Hits doing plus 50% damage. Well, this is exactly the kind of weapon that you would want that on because you can definitely use this weapon almost exclusively in Vats if you choose to. And getting some extra damage from those Vats Critical Hits will help you get more one-hit kills, which is going to be very important with a weapon as slow as the Pipe Bolt Action Pistol. It's basically the pistol, or if you mod it out to be a rifle, uh, version of the hunting rifle. So definitely a very slow firing weapon but it does hit reasonably hard 
and then the plus 50 damage resistance while aiming. That does not synergize well with the second star, unfortunately, but it does give you an option if you prefer to do a little bit more of a free-firing sniper thing with it. So it's not terrible, but again, you know, if you have this thing suppressed, it's probably not going to be doing a whole lot for you in most situations. So overall, I'd call this one on the lower side of mediocre. Didn't really get anything too exciting today, but uh, we'll be back next week to try it again as usual. So uh, if you enjoyed my content, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and it doesn't cost you any money. And until next time, thank you for watching.